This has been a long journey. It's been over the, the course of eight to nine years of just uh, playing with Team USA, going to training camps over the summer. I like to say that a lot of my teammates, uh, we started out as strangers, now we're not only best friends, but, but brothers and family, just because we spend more time in the summers with each other than we actually do our, our actual families. Um, and it's a lot of time in this gym right behind me at Cedar Crest. It's, it's a lot of uh, empty gyms, just you and yourself. And I, I think one of the biggest things is when someone speaks potential into your life, you, it takes you places that you never thought that, thought that you could go. And for me, there was a lot of people that said, I see something in you. And that drove me to the next step, to the next step, and to the next step. And then it's also passion. It's, it's what I love to do. It's where I found freedom. And, and not every eight-year-old kid finds passion at when he's eight years old. It, it may take a lifetime to get there. And so I think all those things uh, set the scene for a, a gold medal winning moment. It's, it's not just me, it's so many other people. And to be standing here is kind of surreal. So you had the goal of go, getting onto the team for the 2020 Olympics, but when you found out that we have no idea if the Olympics are actually going to happen, um, how did you just keep preparing to be able to compete when you did? Well, t when 2020, I mean, everybody has a story from 2020, right? And, and my story is, you know, March, you're training for the Games, you're getting ready to peak for the Paralympic Games, which is the biggest moment in my career and all of a sudden gyms are closed. All of a sudden you can't find a basketball court, even outdoors, that isn't like zip tied up. And so for me, when we didn't know if the games were happening or not, you still need to train like the games are happening until they're physically actually postponed. And I was training in a, a garage. I would go in through the garage of, of someone's house, they had a court set up and no contact at all. I was able to, to do what I needed to do, get in, get out. Um, but I remember those days as kind of like, you know, putting my stake in the ground and saying, hey, regardless of the outcome, I'm gonna do everything that I can to, to, to make sure that I'm ready when this moment happens. Kind of like when you're calling, when yeah. you're called up to, the, to step up to the plate. Exactly, I'm not gonna wait for the moment, I'm gonna be prepared for the moment. And all of our guys did that. You, you had to find different unique ways. I remember seeing one of my teammates have two water jugs on the end of like a PVC pipe and he's bench pressing it just to try to get weights in for the day. Um, in some ways it drew us closer than ever before, but then as the months and year went on, we didn't see each other for 16 months just because Olympic and Paralympic training sites were closed. We had some guys overseas. We had some guys in the States. Borders were closed. And, and for a while, it was kind of, you know, we'd love to see each other, but is this thing actually going to happen? Uh, so like I said, st standing here today and having the gold medal around my neck and even some dicey moments that happened over the course of the Tokyo Paralympic Games uh, with COVID when we were there. Uh, there were so many storylines that uh, but the biggest one is that we stuck together and, and no matter what, we trusted one another. And I think that that was the glue that allowed us to, uh, even when you're down five points in the fourth quarter uh, of a gold medal winning match, uh, you, you can come together for one goal and have a gold medal around your neck. Is it almost um, just a faith in your team to, that you guys were like, we got this, we can win this gold medal, we're not giving up on each other? I think when you spend enough time with one another, you, you know how, how much work each individual has put in. I think we also believe that we were the best team and we had the best players in the world. And so if we needed to put a run on with five minutes to go or if we weren't at our best in pool play or the quarterfinals or the semifinals, we knew we could figure out a way to get the job done because we looked down the bench and you saw 12 guys and all were capable of putting in the minutes, putting in the baskets and playing great defense. Uh, that, that ultimately gets you wins. And now you're a few months post the Paralympics. Yep. Has it really just sunk in? I know you said it was surreal, but has this whole just year, year and a half, um, capping off with a gold medal, has it all just come to fruition? Well, I, one, coming home, I think, opens up a whole new reflection period for me. Um, seeing people that I grew up with, seeing people that supported me for 20 plus years on this journey, 
uh, it definitely makes it more surreal and hit home. Uh, the weight of the medal, as you felt, is, is very heavy, and so I think it, it also signifies the weight of the moment and how, mu how much has gone into that. Um, this gold medal has many chapters to it, and I think I'm just starting to pull back each chapter and see what's behind that story and, and what did I learn from those moments and how can I uh, implement that into my life, implement that into my work, implement that into future success at the Paralympic level, uh, all those things. And so it takes time. I, I haven't had too much time to reflect yet, but I think as things settle down a little bit, um, that's something that I look forward to doing. Now, it's very rare for some schools to have one gold medalist, <laughs> but to have two gold medalists from Cedar Crest, that has to be something special or mean something special to you. Yeah, Jamie Gray Byerly is uh, one. In 2012, I was a junior in high school. I was heading into my senior year, and she came back, and we got to meet her, and, and we interviewed her, and then I made my first national team, and I went to the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center, and we bumped into each other at the cafeteria. And so we got to reconnect there. And my dad coached her in soccer here at, at, at the school. And so just so many connections and, and overlaps. Um, but to, to win a gold medal, to bring another one to Cedar Crest, I think it just speaks to we have like unique people that kind of go all around the globe and, and play all different sports. Um, but we always come back home, and it's always special to celebrate with where you started and, and at your roots. Yeah, and how special is that for you? It's a small town in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, just even, uh, I have great connections here with Tommy Smith, the basketball coach, um, Rick Dissinger, who's the AD, and so many others. And so even when, when you came in today, you saw just catching up, reminiscing. Uh, I look in this uh, trophy case behind you, and I see Derek Fisher. I see Jamie Gray Byerly. And, and those are people that I either grew up with, I've met, I've known, and so it's a small town but yet uh, we've accomplished so much. So it means a lot, and uh, I've felt their support the whole way. How much different was it to compete on the world's biggest stage and not just compete <laughs> for Team USA, but actually at the Olympics? One of the things that I think is very overlooked but coming more uh, mainstream of late is, is mental health. And how do you perform at your best when it matters the most? For me, I, I think I recognized uh, maybe three to four games in that it's, you're not only playing a game that has those high pressure situations, but then when you really reflect on it, it's like I, I'm playing a game that I've worked 20 years for. And that can be overwhelming, that can be uh, bringing you anxiety, that can bring so many levels. But having our sports psychologist uh, there and, and working through just, you know, shattering the magnifying glass of focusing in on one moment and really remembering all the success that you've had over and the thousands and hundreds of thousands of shots that you've taken. It allows you to kind of normalize the moment, walk in with confidence and, and play your best. And so having that and then having teammates that have been there and done that, um, some of our teammates, it was their fourth, fifth Paralympic Games. We were a super veteran squad and that helped to just ask them questions, pick their brain and, and follow their lead as they kind of uh, led our team to the success that we had. Whether it's a kid from Cedar Crest or anywhere in Pennsylvania or anywhere in the world, how do you want to be that role model to the next Olympian or Paralympian? Well, I think one of the biggest things is that um, like giving back in, in my, with my time. Time is the most precious thing that we have. And I want to be able to help that next generation, that next eight-year-old Ryan that's, that's training for the Paralympic Games. I know that equipment's expensive. I know that you have to travel far, whether it's for a, a Paralympic sport or an Olympic sport. Like, eventually, you're going to have to leave Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and go to other areas to be able to continue to uh, be around other elite athletes that are helping you grow and, and, and succeed. And so I just think that being able to be a voice, being able to educate, being able to showcase that, you know, Ryan Nicewender, who has a disability, uh, it's not just an inspiration, it's not just like a cute story, it's, it's, he's an elite athlete that trained 20 plus years and there's plenty of other people with disabilities that have tons of potential and so the story is, 
is to educate people that just because you have a disability doesn't mean that it stops at that. Like the period doesn't stop there, it's a comma, and, and after that there's so much more. And so those are the things that I want to be able to give back. Um, I've been able to meet people in this area even that uh, they're getting their kids plugged into adapted athletics and, and it makes me happy because uh, I know what that did for my life and I know how that can impact the trajectory of where they go. And that there's a chance for any, everyone. Exactly, exactly. The door is open. Uh, the world is primed for this moment. And I just think that the Paralympic movement is only going to continue to get bigger and bigger. So we're a year closer to the next Olympics. We are. How about yourself? What's <laughs> your story? Are you coming to a close or are you going to continue this uh, story book for yourself? Yeah, it, when, I, uh, when I reflected on it, I took a moment to reflect on that, but uh, 2024 is going to happen. I, I have to make the team. Uh, obviously, there's tons of great talent out there, but 2024, I, I think I have more left to give to the game. And the same way that I told you that there were guys that had been there and done that uh, four or five times at the Paralympics, for me, I know I want to be able to help bridge that gap for the next generation. And also, uh, just with the platform that the gold medal gives, I want to be able to use that to continue to make an impact uh, in this hometown, in this nation, and, and globally. For me, when I think about the Paralympics, uh, it's, it's a lot about educating right now. It's, you know, it's the Olympics and Paralympics. If you just watched the Olympics, you, you missed Ryan Nicewinder play at the world's biggest stage. And so we're doing a great job, but we, we need, we're continuing to educate people on that the Paralympics uh, exist, that they're different than the Paralympic, or Olympics, but there's parallels, and that um, don't put limits on people just because they have a disability or they look maybe a little different than what you're used to. Because when we uh, enable, when we ask questions, when we help provide avenues, that's when we're at our best. And, and everybody has their own superpower, and it's, it's our job as a community to, to be able to help those people um, disability or not, thrive. And that's my message. My message is just uh, listen, become educated, grow, learn, and help people reach their untapped potential. Because everybody has a different path. No exactly. Exactly. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you. Yep.